Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session about the new frontiers. Hello, Professor Asheri. Hello, Mr. Sofati. Thank you so much for joining us. And I suggest we'll just dive in so we could talk about neuroscience and AI in 20 minutes. So, Hi, good evening. <laughs> good evening to both of you. So, uh, Professor Asheri, maybe you can first try and explain what's between neuroscience and education. Yeah, I think that would be a great start for this uh, fantastic uh, meeting. So I think that, you know, the main link between learning and neuroscience, so we all learn constantly, basically, from throughout our life, from the moment we are born. Uh, we learn how to uh, uh, hold the cap, we learn how to walk, how to speak, and later on, we heard about it, we learn how to interact with other people, we learn languages, uh, skiing, solving mathematical problems and we learn how to adapt ourselves. And as Erica from LinkedIn said, we are all learning also now. So amazingly, everything occurs in our brains. And the main question is, is how? So basically and practically, the most easiest way to look at it is that when we learn something, the connections between our nerve cells in the brain are strengthening or weakening. And this allows us to learn new things and maybe forget other things. And this process occurs in many areas of the brains and allows us to learn how to ride a bike, how to solve a mathematical path, a mathematical a, a prob a problem, and this uh, stays with us, hopefully, for the rest of our life. But interestingly, this learning can be different from person to person. It can also be different uh, between the uh, emotional state of a person. So we might need to think about some ways to adopt maybe personalized teaching, personalized learning for each one of us. So that's basically the link between the neuroscience field that uh, that uh, is involved in understanding how we learn how our brain function and dysfunction into the learning field. And of course, we'll elaborate about it, but uh, maybe a few words about, about uh, Mindjugate. Yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Tel Aviv University, we established Mindjugate in collaboration with uh, Yuval Schreiber from uh, Tau Online. And uh, Mindjugate is a center for learning and uh, a science of learning uh, with the idea of enhancing our understanding of learning to enhance the understanding of human learning and create a research based cut, cutting edge solution for enhancing uh, learning and also to build a vivid ecosystem and to uh, encourage uh, research based entrepreneurship and the idea is really to have researchers coming from different disciplines from education from philosophy from psychology from neuroscience and each one of them is bringing his or her own research in order to understand learning better. And we believe from neuroscience that if we understand learning better, we can understand how to boost learning and how to enhance learning. And we can talk later on about uh, different uh, um, um, examples from the several projects. Okay, so we'll, uh, of course, uh, elaborate about it. But uh, Daniel, maybe you could uh, talk about uh, AI and you know what, let's talk about the future. Will we have teachers in, in the classrooms in our future? The answer is yes. And I can stop here. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, mm -hmm. like many things, uh, I don't know if we will still call them teacher, I hope so. But the role of the teacher is going to be transformed by AI. Like in many other domains in society, when artificial intelligence enter the realm of human intelligence, we don't see an elimination. It's not a replacement paradigm. It's more an augmentation paradigm. And therefore, the teacher, 20 years from now, maybe in the classroom in seventh grade, will still teach, but her role will be different. She will be augmented by all kinds of other uh, artificial intelligence devices that will make her a better teacher. So, yes, we will have teachers, but uh, no, they won't do the same job as they're doing. But what will we need to learn if everything will be um, done by machines, if AI could choose for us? What will we do in school? We will learn. This is what you do in school. Yes, exactly. Uh, but the... Um, um, AI is not going to do things for us necessarily. I mean, there is that myth about the robots are coming and they're going to take our job, they're going to take our roles, and we will stay at home and watch Netflix. No, that's not that's not our future. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> our future is more than all our jobs, whether we are a professor, uh, a physician like you, or a, or a, or a CEO, our jobs are going to be transformed. And how that transformation happens depends very much on how we are thoughtfully blending the essence of human intelligence as neuroscientists understand it so well and artificial intelligence. These are two different intelligences. We shouldn't make artificial intelligence think like humans and we should make humans trying to think like artificial intelligence. The secret is the recipe is how to blend them in a way that is maximally beneficial to us, the human race. So, Uri, maybe you could elaborate about the fact that we see that applications and the way we live our lives degenerate parts in our brains. Uh, do, do you study, for example, what parts of our brains will need um, more um, I don't know how to, to put it in a way, um, in words, but uh, what will we need to do to de-degenerate these parts if it's necessary? No, I, I don't think that we are uh, undergoing the uh, degeneration, uh, even during that, uh, that stage. Uh, we are constantly, hopefully, learning, but we might uh, be able to use uh, several neuroscience tools in order to uh, maybe to enhance or to boost our Ability, but maybe I'll uh, you know I'll, I'll give you an example of uh, of some of the uh, project, for example, uh, trying to enhance learning or in mathematical performance. This is something that uh, people discussed in uh, during that uh, uh, the last two days uh, quite extensively. So uh, the idea here is that we can try and apply various brain stimulation uh, to the brain with a closed EEG loop. So let's assume that somebody is doing a mathematical task. While uh, you record this EEG uh, uh, activity, EEG is uh, recording the electrical activity in the brain. And you can see which frequency in which domain, in which area of the brain is active. Now, with the different type of stimulation, you can, uh, with a closed loop, a lot of artificial intelligent machine learning is going to be there to make the, the loop quite fast. But in the same time that he's learning, you can stimulate this area with the same frequency, and this might enhance the student learning. So the idea is really to, as a personalized, tailored, made stimulation that can enhance brain activity towards a specific task. It's not you that is the AI, it's an AI computer that is sitting near you and allows this fast calculation and stimulation on the same times, measuring the EEG activity and, you know, feedback loop to uh, cope it and to make it uh, better. That's the connection that I see between AI e.g. neuroscience and learning. One example. I, I, I'm trying to, to figure out what will remain uh, our duty. What will we need to learn if we don't need to navigate uh, by ourselves, if we don't need to calculate by, by ourselves? What, what will be left for us? I, I don't think that, it's, that that's the idea. The idea will be that we might be able to boost a little bit to enhance our ability. But still, I, I'm, you know, uh, quite a, a believer in the idea that uh, we will learn how to solve problems, we will learn how to integrate information coming from the many different disciplines. This might be done by a computer, but mm -hmm. I think that uh, the human touch understanding is still there and we are going to operate the machine to allow us better performance. Hopefully, they won't, uh, you know, exchange us. But that's for the future to see. So, Daniel, how do you think that uh, AI will be involved in the future classroom? Yeah, so I, I think in two ways. I can think of many ways, but I think in two ways. There are a lot of uh, the discussions over the past two days in this uh, fascinating conference have been around this notion of personalized learning. People call it adaptive learning, individualized learning. And the notion is that we are all individuals. We all learn very differently. Uh, maybe learning is a great differentiator be between the different styles and the different preferences, the different speed of learning. And when you have a classroom of 30 uh, kids, uh, it's very difficult for a single teacher, some star teachers. Uh, Mrs. Smith in third grade was able to do that. 
but but uh, it's very difficult for a teacher to tailor the curriculum and the learning and the pedagogical approach to each individual student. Mm -hmm. But if some AI would have all the data about these students, all their historical data, the way they learn, what they have done, and is able to tailor a learning path individually for each one of them. And the role of the teacher will be kind of the, the same role that the pilot doesn't fly the airplane anymore. The pilot supervises an autonomous system that flies the, 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 uh, the, the, the airplane. The same thing in the, in the classroom. The teacher may be able then to let the intelligent tutoring system guide the student and from time to time nudge it here and nudge it there because the teacher will have the intuition and the instinct that is very uniquely human to this day to be able to continue to be the teacher. So maybe the augmented teacher, augmented by this AI system that personalizes and does that very, what we call today, precision learning, um, so that you don't study, you don't relearn things that you already know and you go deeper on things that you need to know. Maybe that augmented teacher will be better than the very best teacher. That's the whole notion, that it's the same with the radiologist in medicine today. The best AI systems do not do better than the very best radiologist in the world to detect the tumor in the brain. But the average radiologist, augmented by the right AI system, together as a team, perform better than the best radiologist in the world. That's so maybe maybe I should have asked you if there will be any classrooms because you see also in this crisis, the COVID-19 crisis, that people are staying at home. Maybe the school and the AI teacher uh, will be at home. Maybe. And maybe it will also be at home and facilitate the great absence of this uh, distributed learning that we are in the midst of during, during COVID-19, which is a peer-to-peer -peer learning. The reason the classroom works so well is that you not just learn from the material or learn from the teacher, but you learn also from the questions of the other students mm -hmm. or the answers of the other students. And maybe that, uh, maybe um, artificial intelligence will be able to measure the right things and then feed that back to the to, to the right people at the right the right students at the right time to maximize learn. Yes. So, so Uli, maybe one of the the most significant uh, um, leverage of this uh, idea is that uh, any difficulty for uh, students like uh, dyslexia, dyscalculation, uh, will be gone. We will. I don't know. It it will be something we could. Ignore. So I, I hope that you know, with new uh, abilities, we can really help uh, uh, people with disabilities, with dyslexia, and you know, overcome their uh, limitation. This is something I think we are, we are, we are going to. Uh, if I if I make comment on, on uh, what Daniel uh, just said, that I think that there is still a gap that I see between you know uh, you know the future as we would like to see it and be, be in, and, and where we are now. I think that at the moment. We must have some change in the teaching system. Although all of us continue to to teach with uh, you know different platform like uh, Zoom and Meet and, and Team, I think this platform really provided us uh, technical abilities. Uh, they are a great platform for that. But uh, I think that in the next year or years, the university must you know invest and develop. And you know people have discussed it: the more in, intuitive, interactive, uh, a hybrid way of uh, of uh, teaching. First, before we introduce the, the AI teacher into the room, I think that might take a few more years. But first, we need to solve, I think, the the, the current situation. So we need to use more and more uh, interactive uh, between the teacher online and the student. Uh, it might be partially hybrid and partially not hybrid. So maybe this is the next question. How quickly do you think we'll see these changes? And how do you think governments are uh, uh, implying these, uh, applying these, uh, these changes and systems? So, Hila, I think that the, if we had this conversation five months ago, we would have the same questions and answers. 
I think to a great extent, yes. What COVID-19 has done is that accelerated some processes that were already in there. So it's kind of a catalyst, an accelerator of sorts of uh, transforming learning. Um, for example, the, US, the United States Navy, which is a huge organization with several hundred thousand people, is already transforming the very same thing that we've been talking about. This notion of each sailor is an individual, that at any point in the career of a sailor, he or she will have a choice to basically pick up something on LinkedIn or on YouTube or on anything because the system will tell him or her, hey, we think you need to become a better expert at that particular task that is your task. So there will be kind of a system that will guide you through that learning, but not just in the classroom, not even in the distributed classroom, but throughout your entire career. And that's really is a, the, the vision for the future, that learning is not going to be a moment. Learning is going to be a continuum throughout your career, way beyond university, way beyond graduate school, but into your work life. Mm -hmm. Uli, the same so, question. So I think that, that you know, I would have asked, answered it a little bit different. So six months ago, we would have said it will take another three, four, five years to you know start this online teaching. Mm -hmm. But you know, COVID uh, brought us to the, the stage that we must do it now, and I think we did it. Uh, you know, within the next uh, last month, really extremely good, and there is still a way to go. But I think that the universities must continue in this direction and lead not only in university education, but education in schools, in colleges, in, 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 as, a, as a whole. Since I think, uh, as ma many people mentioned here, I think that's you know, the, the most important thing is really to get the best uh, out of each one of us. And this started in education and in good teacher and in good teaching. So I hope we'll take it uh, to the next stage together. And it's also very important to have this kind of meeting to brainstorm, bring ideas, create collaboration and, and, and push them uh, forward. So we will end this session by uh, the question that is asked during all the sessions. What is the one element that will profoundly change within the next few years in the field of education, in your opinion? Uri, you want to start? <laughs> no, I think that uh, this is time for us to invest in uh, ourselves, invest in our future and really invest in education and in the next generation. So I think that the next school year will be different. Uh, we need much more easy, uh, more engaging activity integrated. And I think that will really lead us to the next uh, stage. Again, collaborating with as many uh, uh, professionals from different directions that each one of them will uh, supplement and complement and uh, will allow us a, a, a better future. Daniel? I personally think that the um, what one of the most transformative um, elements, many of them certainly, uh, progresses in artificial intelligence or neuroscience or, or uh, other uh, technologies is one. But I think the big transformation is a realization that learning doesn't happen in a particular place and a particular time. We heard today from presidents of university that are putting thousands of courses online that are there for anybody to take. A kid in Malaysia can pick up a course from MIT and get and, and, and learn from it. A skill can be taught on a, on a YouTube video. And I think this notion of separating learning at, the, at school and at the university, followed by a period of working, as Yuval Harari told us, is, an, is becoming an obsolete notion. That in order to survive in our work, to continue to be able to have jobs and to continue to excel and grow, we need to continuously learn and we need to continuously learn because we'll have access to all these incredible resources. The notion of having had a PhD 10 years ago is much less important than the notion of keeping up with the knowledge and skills demand of our jobs now and in the future. And therefore, the ubiquity and permanence of learning is going to dominate, I know, perhaps not my generation, but certainly my kids' generation. That was fascinating. And it was the tip of the iceberg. Thank you so much for both of you. Thank you Thanks. very much. Thank you very much.